Hello, guys, and welcome back to the Rovers Report, where you join me and Tom after Rovers' disappointing result against Derby County yesterday. Um, I think for me, mate, it was just a bit of a disappointing end to what had been a really encouraging week. Um, I think the players obviously just sort of ran out of juice a little bit. And the one word for me to describe it, it's just a bit flat. Just a bit disappointing. And, you know, especially with the 3,000 strong Rovers fans behind us, you know, I thought we we could go there and get something. But, you know, as the saying goes, it just proved the bridge too far, didn't it, mate? I, I agree with that sentiment, mate. I think you know it, we did run out of juice quite clearly after what was quite a busy week, playing Argyle at home and then Wendy away at Hillsborough on the Wednesday. So, you know, yesterday it was obviously disappointing, but I'm sort of glad that we actually went there looking to win rather than sitting back like we did at Ipswich and Pompey earlier in the season. So, you know, we played our, our players in their, in their um, positions that they're most strong uh, in. Um, I think, as, as you said, just slightly flat defensive errors cost us. You know, arguably three of those goals are defensive errors. Um, so, it, you know, I think it's disappointing. And ultimately, we've only taken two out of nine points. But at the same time, we I think we've shown that we can compete against some of the bigger teams. I think we're still sort of um, trying to find our flow at the moment. So, hopefully, you know, as the season progresses, we can actually pick up three points in those sorts of games. Yeah, yeah. I think I think as well, mate, if you'd said to most Rovers fans at the start of this week, you know, come Sunday, you're going to be sat there and you're going to take in two points, probably most people would have taken it. And, um, mm. you know, I just... It's, 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 it was disappointing yesterday, but, you know, there's there's been plenty of moments throughout this week which lead me to believe we're, we're pretty much definitely going to be safe, I think, now. And it's just about where we can push on. Um, the first topic that I'd like to cover, mate, for, for the Derby game is... You know, that, that defence raised a lot of questions yesterday. I think we've obviously, we've touched on the fact there were mistakes and look, that, that can happen. And I think maybe against, you know, not not a good a striker as uh, David McGoldrick or Dizzy, as you like to call him. Um, yeah. we, we may not have conceded as many goals, but the three points for me that I'd like to look at is why didn't Connolly start? I think that might be more easily answered in the fact that he probably was fit enough for 45, but not the, you know, the whole 90 minutes. Um why was Luca Hall played at left centre back, which to me just seems quite confusing. You know, he he's, he's been, he was a brilliant player last year for us at right back, and Barton seems to want to shoo him into this position, and I'm not quite sure it's worked for me yet. And then finally, um, it's just is this the end of the road for Alfie Kilgore? Um, you know, I think there's been plenty of opportunities for him to play. You know, early on in the season we've had a lot of injuries in that position, and yet Barton still seemingly is very reluctant to play him and you know we all love the lad he like he's one of our own but he he just might not be up to this level and you know there's nothing wrong with that I'm sure he'd do a very good job for a mid-table upper end league two team but you know I, th I think it is worth asking a question can we move him on free up a bit of wages and potentially get someone a bit better in um I'll let you choose where you want to come in with that mate but those are just three things I, I thought from the defence of course, mate, and I think they're all interlinked, really. Um, I, I agree, Connolly didn't start because he's not a match fit. He's only, he, I think that was his first appearance since the 20th of, of August, somewhere, mm. sometime like that. So um, he's obviously not match fit. Um, yeah, And then the, I think the second and third questions are in, uh, obviously st most strongly interlinked. I think it's quite clear that Barton doesn't rate Kilgore, and I think his time at the club is pretty much over. Um, I mean, it was telling, really, from the Lincoln game when... Kilgore's red card was rescinded um, from the Ipswich game and he decided to play a 40-year-old veteran in Glenn Whelan, who's, who's actually one of our coaches at centre-back instead of Kilgore, which I thought was an embarrassment at the time. Mm. Um, and, you know, it, it didn't pay the dividend considering we lost 6-3. But <laughs> I think I think it's, yeah, it's quite clear that Kilgore's time at the club is pretty much over and I'd imagine he'll be moved on in January. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure he has. This is his final season um, under contract, so um, I think he's signed a three-year deal in the summer 2020. So I think it, it wouldn't surprise me if he's loaned out in January with the prospect of him um, finding another club uh, permanently uh, in June. So I think I don't. Also, don't I, I agree with your sort of questioning of why Hall is being played at centre half? I think. It's quite clear that he's a 
right back by trade and you know i've always banged on about square pegs and round holes mm-hmm. but it's i think it's becoming increasingly frustrating seeing him being being played there but at the same time it seems like if he doesn't trust Kilgore, then who's the only option unless we want to play wheeling against didsy on saturday which um I, yeah I, I don't think um was uh was, was the right, right thing to do so I've heard people say that and I appreciate that he was probably more utilised in a back three at Port Vale. But, you know, uh, James Gibbons has obviously got a bit more experience in Luca Hall. You know, imagine being, I think, 20, 21 year old going to Derby County against, let's be honest, the championship strike force. Joey Barton putting you in there alongside another almost teenager and saying, there you go, play out of position. Yeah, you've just, uh, with things like that, I think you could have a bit more sort of yeah, not gamesmanship, but, but just be a bit smarter about it. Luca Hall at right back would probably do the same job that Gibbons would. And I think that James Gibbons at centre back would do a bit of a better job than, than Luca Hall would. Yeah, I I think it's it's an interesting one because I haven't seen Gibbons play at the back. I'd imagine it's because Hall is slightly more slightly taller, yeah. maybe. And yeah. you think about the aerial aerial battle. Um so uh, yeah, I guess if and also Barton, I guess wanted to persevere with the four three three. So, in with that in mind, you know you you're probably looking to play the taller centre half alongside Bobby Thomas. So, I can understand the rationale. It's just I think maybe a slight aberration just because Beefy will be fit now, um, and hopefully Gibson isn't injured for for long. So actually, we should hopefully be back to. Um, the four centre halves, I believe it's four. So Thomas, um, Gibson, Beefy, and Kilgore as our centre half um, pack. Mm. Um, I think it's yeah, I think it's a slight one off just because Beefy wasn't match fit um, to play a full game. So I think going forward, it's going to be an interesting one because I've been really impressed with Gibson this season, and and I think we missed him yesterday uh, mm. quite clearly. Um, so. At the same time, Beefy was so instrumental in the second half of last season playing with Connor Taylor. Um, so it's an interesting conundrum for Joey going forward. Um, and I think he's going to have to mix it up slightly or even revert to the, is it going to be, is there going to be a return of 3-4-3 three, three, um, that's been sort of revered by Joey in the, in the press over the last couple of months um, with Beefy, Gibson and Thomas at centre-half and that. So I think it's going to be an interesting conundrum, but Going back to you, the original questions, mm-hmm. I think it's quite clear that Kilgore's not trusted. Hall was put in as an emergency measure. Um, I think he will. He has played him mostly right back this season anyway. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's it's like disappointing because obviously if, I think if we had Gibson at the back yesterday, we would have maybe got a draw out of it. But uh, it is what it is. There's not much we can do about it, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's, I, I just think it's one of those games, you know, you, you get sort of two or three of them a season where everything goes against you and there's minimal you can do really to be honest. So I, I think the best thing from that is just to take the positives from throughout the week and we, we won't go into too much detail on it because it's been covered already, but, you know, the, the Sheffield Wednesday game and the Plymouth games, they were fantastic and especially that Plymouth game, we did really well there and, you know, we could definitely have gone on to win that. So I, th- I think looking forward, mate, it's obviously... The Rochdale game is coming up this coming weekend. And you might be potentially right there, mate. That could be an opportunity to sort of experiment a little bit. And I think you might see us go back to the three at the back, just so Bart can test out these sort of different partnerships. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think what, what I would play necessarily now if it was the if we're looking at our strongest team. Um, you know, you've obviously you're saying that Gibson will be coming back. Um, and then we have, I think. I think Lofty's going to be out for a couple of weeks, I think he said, which is a real shame because he was just hitting a real a real run of form. And then, obviously, Harry Anderson is now out injured as well. And, you know, he brought in McCormick on the weekend and he didn't really do it for me. And I'll be honest, he hasn't really done it for me since he's come back. And I just wondered if you have any thoughts on, you know, what's, what's stopping him from hitting those heights that he was at previously with us? It's an interesting one. I think... You know he did. He has been playing in a in a three when I, you know, he played. From what I remember, he played in a two. Um, when we when we when he was at Rovers last time. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. It's I'm not sure if it's perhaps the fact that he's still feeling rusty after having pretty much no season with Wimbledon. Um, he's been in, in and out of the team, so I, I'm not sure what what the reason is for the lack of form. Um, mm. It's just pleasing that Evo is now showing signs of the player that he was last season, and Finley's definitely he's definitely seen an uptick in Finley's performances recently. So I think it's it's not worrying, but I think maybe, you know, it's I think we would have expected Mackin to do, do a little bit better when he's been on the pitch. Um, it's an interesting one. I don't know if it's formation or the fact that, uh, yeah, he, he's perhaps still a little bit rusty, but I guess we we got to give him time. I assume, um, you know, by the end of the season, he'll be playing a lot better. Um, I think, you know, he should be starting on Saturday against Dale. Mm. Uh, I think we should be resting a few players as well. So I can see the 3-4-3 three, three coming back um, with Connolly definitely starting perhaps in the heart of that defence with Gibson mm. and maybe even Luca, Luca Hall in a three and resting Thomas. Um, I could see Rhino starting, um, perhaps Trevor Clark left wing back. Um, I think the two... Coot, oh, it depends. Coots, Coots might still be injured, I assume. Um, perhaps Maka and Evo in midfield. And then the, it would be three wingers, right? So Colin Scott be up there. Uh, Sinclair, probably. Um, and uh, Coburn, I think. That would be my team. So, yeah, I'd be resting a few players for Saturday. Uh, it's quite interesting, actually, how only half the ground is open apparently uh, I'm not yeah, sure. I, I saw you mention this where, where did you see that was it... uh, I was through my through the credible source that is my old man is it <laughs> um, in so the know I, 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 he's in the know um, I assume because yeah, obviously on the ticket website the, the ground it was shows the availability uh, it's a bit of an interesting one obviously attendance is um, we've touched on this recently about say uh, supports group and um you know, I uh, I think it's, yeah, it's been an interesting one because I'm looking at some of the attendances in League Two and they're pretty much matching us. Mm. It seems like Stock, Stockport and Orient. Um, and, you know, I think, obviously, I hope there's some more clarity. I, I think Tom Grange is writing some, something in the programme notes for the game on Saturday regarding the uh, the limited capacity of the stadium. Uh, but it's, it's a bit ironic that Therefore, half the stadium is uh, going to be empty. So what is that? Do you think that that's going to be a capacity of around four and a half thousand? I that's... think of five, yeah, five or six probably. I, I understand that it's a you know it's an early FA Cup tie, but I wouldn't be surprised if there will be more demand. And you know, I mean, mm. I think we will sell out that game, and that's. I, I there must be a reason for it. If it's, it's, if it's something like cost or something like that, though, it just seems unfair on fans that do want to go and watch mm. that game, but. At, there could be something more, more concerning at play. There is that if there's some sort of safety issues or something along the lines of that, you know that that could be worrying for Rovers fans because I can't I can't see a reason why they would do that unless there was something that they had to have, their hand was being forced. I can see it being a cost thing. To be honest, if mm. you know if you're only filling half of the west enclosure, um, then there's probably no point keeping it open. You can just put people in the. I can't even know, can't even remember what the, the name of the big stand's called. It used to be the dry build, the one I sit in, um, and then just pack the the factors in. So I can understand it from a cost perspective. Uh, it's just weird. I don't think that's happened before a Rivers game. So it uh, happens in the pre seasons, totally... isn't it? But I've never seen it in a league yeah. cup game. It def- it's definitely happened in the pre seasons before. But that's that's I don't like that to be honest because that shows a bit of disrespect towards the FA Cup. I'm sure a lot of fans mm. would be going in there on Saturday thinking, you know, it's a chance to sort of go out and watch the team play with a bit of confidence. And it's just that's a poor decision from me, I think, from the board. Mm. Yeah, I agree, mate. It's it's an interesting one, especially considering we're favourites. I can understand, obviously, Dale being a lead two club. It's not a, exactly an exciting fixture, mm. but certainly one that we could win quite comfortably. Um so uh, it is what it is, I guess. But I just hope you know we progress and take it seriously. Um, I I wouldn't give a prediction yet because obviously I don't know if mm-hmm. players are who's going to be fit and who isn't by 
um, by Saturday, but I can see us winning it fairly comfortably. Yeah, yeah, I think so, mate. I think, to be honest, I wouldn't be comfortable giving a prediction yet just because you want to sort of see what happens with the team this this coming week. But um, I think one thing we will know is that Joey Barton will take it seriously. So there's yep. no, I don't think there's anything to be concerned about complacency-wise. And um, I'm sure when we come to record this video a week today on Sunday that, you know, we'll be sat there and um, I, I'm confident we'll get the victory, mate. So just want to say thanks once again for coming on, mate. And uh, I'll see All you guys right, later. Thanks. Cheers.